Ford and Farrell. They're back together like a, a buddy movie. Is it going to have a happy ending? Guess we're going to wait and see. Let's talk about England squad for the Samoa game, which you would imagine is also going to be, barring injury or some horrendous uh, twist in form, it's going to be England's team for the knockout stages as well. So let's get into it. I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers, and I'd love it if I haven't already, if maybe on this video, I will earn your subscription. At the very least, tell me what you think about England's squad, about that Ford Farrell axis at 10 and 12 back together again. Um, I am currently um, coming to you from the Leon Stadium. I'm waiting for New Zealand and Uruguay to get underway. This is my vantage point at the minute. You notice I've got the camera slightly pointed more towards Uruguay than New Zealand. That's because I'm watching my boys, <laughs> Santiago Arata. We're going to get to see New Zealand again. We won't get to see Uruguay after tonight, so I'm enjoying it while I can. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this video. Yeah, you know, sometimes doing a YouTube channel, um, quite often I will say things and people will, you know, weeks, months later, remind me of something I said and say, didn't quite pan out how you said, did it, Tim? And I have to hold my hands up. O on other occasions, and this is one of those, I admittedly, rare occasions, I can say, I told you so. And that is... Um, Owen Farrell at <laughs> 12 and George Ford at 10. Um, I, I had to come up with something like that for the thumbnail. I did have another, uh, actually, let me show you. I had another idea for the thumbnail that I didn't go with. That one, 10, 12 Jump Street. <laughs> but um, I went with that one instead. Yeah, I, I can actually say on this one, I told you so. I've been talking about this uh, Ford Farrell thing for, for months, saying it's not done yet, it's going to happen. And actually, I might be one of the few people that is actually okay with it. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. I've been wanting it, and I'm actually okay with it. And I honestly think, when I look back over, well, probably the last decade, the best attack in rugby that I've seen England play has been when Ford and Farrell have been 10-12. Uh, the negativity towards Owen Farrell generally and towards that combination is palpable. I think it kind of, um, I think a big part of that when you look back is that people were, that was like symbolic of Eddie Jones. People wanted Marcus Smith desperately and he kept picking Ford and Farrell. I quite like it for what it's worth. Again, tell me in the comments what you think, but I'm okay with it as an option. There are other elements of this England team that do leave me scratching my head and let me get into those. Um, Johnny May on the wing. Now, Johnny May wasn't originally selected in Steve Borthwick's 33-man squad, was he? He was surplus to requirements. And now, in, in this final pool game, which you imagine is just a springboard into the Fiji game, and what better preparation could you have for playing Fiji than playing Samoa? Not quite as good a team, but hugely physical like Fiji are going to be immensely talented skillful individuals like Fiji are going to bring so this is like the perfect warm-up for England and Steve Borthwick is going with Johnny May that's not rotation that's not trying people out that is him picking what he thinks is his best squad Johnny May wasn't even in the squad before the World Cup now he's jumped ahead of Elliot Daly ahead of Max Malins ahead of Henry Arundel Henry Arundel you see didn't play with the he didn't stick by Steve Borthwick's script if Henry Arundel had got drop goals and not scored five tries, he might have been playing. So Henry, you've only got yourself to blame, mate. You scored too many tries. No, I joke, but the reason Johnny May is there, and I've kind of made peace with this a little bit, Johnny May is in the team because he's incredible at chasing kicks. He's like a, he's like a dog in the park running after a ball. He runs after a kick with so much enthusiasm. And that's why Steve Borthwick has picked him because he's the best in the squad at doing that and it should tell you exactly what you're going to get from this England team. And there's a little bit of me that, you know what, I sigh and I think, I want, I want to be excited watching the England team play. I want other people to be excited watching the England team play. I want to have a, a, I want to have a team, the way I think about Uruguay, that I'm about to watch, and Santiago Arata and Amarja, the fullback. But you know what, they're going to be going home. And England are probably, possibly, going to get to a semi-final. And actually, when you look, just look at that England squad. Look at that England team that's on the screen now. Okay? New Zealand are just going in currently. Um, look, if you look at that, how many of those England players would you think 
South Africa, Ireland, France or New Zealand would take and put into their starting lineup. It's very, very few. I mean, you could argue in some cases it's zero. I'd say Courtney Laws would probably get in the New Zealand team and um, maybe the Ireland team, possibly the French team. Other than that, who? I, I'm really not sure if there's anyone. Maybe the odd player here and there. It, 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 there might be a few more that get in New Zealand. You, we, you can debate that in the comments as well. But I guess the point is, certainly not on current form. If we were selecting just on recent form, that would be the case. Thing is, if you accept that is the case, the players are not as good as the, as the best teams in the world, then in order to beat some of the best teams in the world, you probably can't fight fire with fire. And you could go one way like Portugal, like Uruguay have done, like Fiji to do to a degree, and lean into other strengths. And England do have some real ball players, Marcus Smith, Henry Arundel, that kind of that kind of player. But actually, yeah, they're gonna kick a lot and squeeze pressure and do what Wales are doing as well, not have the ball and put massive defensive pressure on. And it's been effective. And I've kind of just resigned myself to that fact. And do you know what? We're not gonna we're not we're never England aren't always the person that anyone that isn't English cheers against or they cheer for the team playing England. And it's especially gonna be the case against Fiji. So why not just play the pantomime villains? Play the boring style of rugby and try and beat them. It's just lean into it. So there you go. So I am surprised about Johnny May. I'm not surprised about Owen Farrell, and I'm actually quite pleased about Owen Farrell. Manu Tuolangi, I get why he's 13. Ollie Lawrence could feel hard done by. Joe Marchand, I think, has been playing really well, so I understand why he's on the wing. I'm expecting, maybe on the 50, 60 minute mark, it will be Marcus Smith that comes on. Possibly for Johnny May or Joe Marchant and Freddie Stewart goes on to the wing. I think with another practice about how we get through knockout games if we have to chase the game, I think that could be the thing. Looking at the pack, um, oh sorry, the one person I would say is I am a bit nervous about Ollie Lawrence being the player on the bench because we've already got, well if you count Owen Farrell, three centres in the starting lineup. But what happens if one of the outside backs goes down? I know Marcus Smith is there. What if one of the wingers goes down? Ollie Lawrence on the wing. Wouldn't it have made more sense to have Elliot Daly in the, in the squad? But there you go. As for the pack, kind of picks itself, doesn't it? You could juggle props here and there, go one way or the other. Um, Jack Willis obviously being injured. You wonder if he would have been on the bench. But there we go. I hope we see a little bit more impact and dynamism from Billy Vanapola when he comes on. It's precious little of that. Um, yeah, I guess I, I don't like that that's where I am. I'm kind of resigned to, to the England selection and the England style of play. But as much as I'm resigned to it, I also kind of understand it. And I think that's that's where I'm at. Oh yeah, I, I, number 23 shirt. I was saying he, Elliot Daly, Henry Arundel. So um, we'll wait and see if that backfires. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's what I that's what I think. That's my overwhelming thoughts. I would love to know yours. And uh, I'll leave you with that image. And I'd love to know what you think about Ford Farrell and the rest of that selection of Steve Borthwick. Thank you very much for your support on the channel. Hit subscribe, leave your comments, hit like, and I'll see you on the next one.